Hey there guys, this is me Melorian, and we are now on to game two of Blood and Gears. And again, if you have any questions about what that is and what my lists are all about and what I'm trying to do, I'm gonna have an intro video that's linked down below, but let's just jump right into game two. So I'm coming into this 1-0, feeling good, want to keep up the winning streak, and I'm now up against an unknown. So most of the people that I'm gonna be seeing here, I know from my own city, the neighboring city, somewhere in the province. This is someone who came in from two provinces over from Manitoba. So this guy is uh, Ian. He's uh, a fan of the show, so that's awesome. You know, if you're watching this, Ian, thank you very much. And the problem is, is I know nothing about him. Now, unfortunately, it's kind of a blurry picture that I start off with here. The next ones will be better. But he's actually a mercenary player. So here we have mercenaries versus mercenaries. And part of that made me feel good because this one here, he ended up going with uh, Texas. I know Cephalex very, very well. So there's not going to be any surprises here. Whereas the last game, I had to be very concerned that maybe I was going to have some crazy assassination come out of nowhere that I didn't see coming. And this one here, he's not going to be able to surprise me. I know exactly what he can do. However, because I don't know him as a person or his play style, I have no idea what he's going to go for. I don't know if he'll push hard for a scenario, try and figure out an assassination, and what he's going to really do. I also have no idea what his skill and expertise is. Really, the only thing I had to go on going into this game is the fact that he said that he goes to several large conventions. And so normally that means that they're fairly solid. So going into this, my plan was to be careful. Now it's hard to see again from this because not all the stuff is painted. This was a shitty first picture, but he has a lot of the drudge uh, mind benders. And so they can come up here, they can explode. He also, of course, the overlords. So he has a lot of pieces in here that can really kill off my infantry extremely quickly. And so I'm going to be very careful of that. Now, luckily for me, I know to go after those unit champs as soon as I can and blah, 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 blah. But that's what I'm going to need to do. I'm going to need to try and reduce the amount that he can kill of me, get in his face, and then just try and grind him down until he loses that power. Uh, we both have ambushers coming on, and of course having a full slaver unit coming in is pretty bad news for me. But hey, I just have to accept it, know that he's going to come in, and then try and fight back after. So I actually won the, the turn to go first, and really at that point there, I had a real decision to make because I know that Texas kind of loves going second. You know, going up there, uh, bottom of two, popping feet, pushing everything out of the zone, and hey, look, I score three or whatever it is. So I, I still, with that, decided to go first, deciding that I just want to get as much board position as possible, and that's what I did. My usual thing, escort onto Magnus, a bullet dodger onto the Buccaneer, and then everything zipping up uh, as far as I can. And then basically, I'm at the point where the Overlords can't come up and spray me unless he feats. And if he wants a feat now just to kill a couple of press gangers, I'm okay with that. So on his turn one, there's not really much he can do. Uh, he starts kind of getting up there with a, a few models. Now because he doesn't really have a lot of slavers that start on the board, or because he doesn't have anything else like, you know, press gingers like I do, he has to be very careful that he's going to be in a spot here where he has to give me something. So that's fantastic. Where we're going to be doing this back and forth attrition, the fact that he has to give me some of those benders first is fantastic. Another thing that happened here too is that he wanted to be kind of careful with his Alexia. And so he has them kind of like push back on the right right now. However, the way that they're situated, I can actually get Anastasia back to the linchpin, back to the dominator in the back of the unit. So if I can do that and kind of shut them down for a turn, fantastic. So there's no holding back. It's go, go. So on my turn two, another crappy picture. Sorry about that. 
but pretty much I charge in my press gangers. They kill a few guys, throw them up there. Uh, Anastasia charges in from ambushing. She comes in, uh, kills off the dominators. That's awesome because of the linchpin rule. Next turn, that unit is forced to run. So that's fantastic. And otherwise, you can. one of the funniest things that I did here is guard myself against his ambushers. You can see that I dedicated a unit of halberdiers on the left just to be blocking those ambushers because it's mainly the left zone that I feel I'll mainly be going after. Whereas on the right side, same thing. I didn't completely cover the entire zone because, hey, if I get too far up to those benders, he's just going to feet and kill me and spray me. But I'm in there enough that he can't get deep into that zone. I did make one mistake over there where I actually forgot to move my eliminators like an idiot. But hey, I'm kind of okay with this. I did some pretty good alpha damage. I'm pretty spaced out. I think it'll be very hard for him to feed out everything. Uh, he'll probably have to go from one side or the other. And uh, at this point, I'm just waiting to see what this guy's going to do. Now, the crazy thing that he did is he did not feat. So I really thought this turn he was going to feat and he was going to spray down a bunch of my guys. But what he did instead is that the overlords came up. They did a bunch of spraying. Uh, the benders walked up. They did some exploding. The slavers that are ambushing, they came in from the right flank. They killed some dudes. But the big thing is, is that it still was pretty effective, right? Even without feeding, he killed an okay number. And what I was starting to wonder is that he's running a triple wrecker build. So I'm wondering if he's holding the feet to more so extend the threat of those wreckers. You know, wreckers normally only threaten 10. If you uh, are going to go and TK them, then you're 12. If you can somehow TK the enemy, it's 14. But I mean, it's a lot easier just the feet to bring the enemy towards you. So since I threat 12 inches, I'm guessing he's holding the feet so he out threatens my heavies. So, okay, that's not something I really planned on. However, because of what he had to do there, because his benders walked forward and exploded, and more importantly, because I had two models in his zone that he just wasn't able to kill because of the awkward order of activations, uh, because of how jammed I was in there, he actually doesn't score his zone, and I'm in a fantastic spot here to score on his, because what happened here is that I scored on my zone. I didn't score on the left because he contested it. I didn't score on the right because I don't have a full unit in there, but I'm in a spot right now that if I can score four pound points, which would be pretty easy, I just win. So that's really all I need to do. On the, the right side, the Eliminators go into the zone. On the left side, I got a couple of models I got to kill. He had, what, three of them in there? So between my attacks and stuff, uh, mainly Alexia, she's able to get up there and kill them. And then really, it's just the Halberdiers charging into that objective. I also had my Nomad that could charge into there as well. But basically, that means four more points in this turn. And boom, boom, boom. A scenario win very quick. Now, part of me was actually kind of disappointed with this way of ending the game because when I face somebody that I don't know and is from out of province, I want to have a longer, more thorough game. And especially when it's someone who's like, you know, a fan of the channel and he's playing mercenaries and, you know, he was a really great dude, but this game just really turned out to be extremely fast. Now, we talked about after about how you know, he probably could have feeded, and the way that his army's even designed, whereas my Thexus is to be a really strong scenario one, this one's more designed to be on that attrition. And when you do that, and the benders walk up and then explode, they're not really gaining very much position. So you actually end up having a Thexus list that's not very strong on scenario. So, you know, there's a few other things he could have done. He could have gotten a few more risen into the zone on the right. Uh, maybe some slavers could have gotten into the zone. But I have no doubt that what I had over there would have been enough to clear that zone. So I don't think that would have really changed too much. Uh, of course, if he would have managed to clear out his own zone, that would have stalled me one more turn, and that would have been kind of interesting. But otherwise, no, I'll take it. You know, at this point then, that means I'm 2 nothing in the tournament, going pretty well, feeling pretty good about my chances of, you know, starting to get into that, that upper bracket for this event. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. 
I know it's a fast one. It's kind of sorry for that. But if you have any thoughts of the game or anything like that, please post them down below. And we'll catch you for game three. And just uh, as a spoiler, it's going to be a doozy.